today we will talk about scroll stack scroll stack is an indian answer to a lot of similar platforms like substack where creators can create their account publish something i and it also integrates uh, payments you can also charge your audience for something while you're developing your audience on the newsletter it it is mobile first and it is in various indian languages so you don't just have to write in english and obviously there will be elements of social in it in the future i guess ritesh is co-founder of scroll stack he has worked in facebook and google before and few other companies he had written a very good article why they created scroll stack for the indian economy for the indian for for india and that's a great it's linked uh, on our page so ritesh and i will be discussing how we how scroll stack happened and how it will help our creators and what are the takeaways for the audience today in the first session ritesh will present uh, present how how the idea came and how they developed what were the challenges they are trying to address and how it will help us in the next session i will be putting up questions to ritesh and we will also take up questions from the audience so let's start the today's edition with ritesh presentation over to you ritesh great thank you thanks abhishek uh, for the intro and for setting the context thank you zainab and team at has geek for arranging this and good morning everyone uh, on a saturday morning i hope you guys have a good morning happening wherever you guys are in india so what i'm going to do essentially is i'll start with the product demo because nothing tells the story like a working functioning uh, product Uh, i will do it fairly quickly just to show off uh, what we've built so far uh, and then uh, i'll also sort of quickly touch on what's coming up in the couple of in the next couple of weeks and then i'll go into a very short presentation that sort of explains why we uh, landed where we are today so let me share my screen uh, and we can get started there you go share someone tell me once you guys are able to see the screen Yes, I'm zooming. You can see the screen. All right. So yes, this is. Yes, we can see. Perfect. Great. So if you are a creator on Scroll Stack, right? This is essentially what your Scroll Stack uh, homepage or your own homepage would look like. First thing that I want to draw everybody's attention to is if you can see the address bar. It says Ritesh dot Scroll Stack dot com, and not Scroll Stack dot com slash Ritesh, right? So essentially, one of the promises that we have at Scroll Stack is we'll always put you. as a creator first or will always put creators first before scroll stack the brand if you look at my top part of my creator page there is no scroll stack branding that you see here right scroll stack your scroll stack profile or your scroll stack feed is actually about you who you are as a creator one of the things that we aim to give you is a beautiful identity on the web which is not a boring linkedin profile where you sort of talk about where you worked and what you've done but essentially as a creator who you are right so abhishek touched about passion economy this is essentially what your passion and what your obsessions are so you can sort of talk about uh, what you believe in you can talk about what are you currently obsessed about who are your favorite things people places uh, what are you in search of you can also add custom sections here uh, if you want to uh, and you can also link to all of your social places uh your home page or your feed is where you actually create all of your content uh and this content as abhishek mentioned doesn't have to be in english right so let's say i uh was born in uh i grew up in gujarat and i gujarati is my first language so if i want to write in gujarati as you can see it actually looks beautiful as beautiful as english would uh look if you want to write in hindi these are the only two languages i can write in same thing here hindi would also look beautiful as well when you start to create uh, and and as as abhishek mentioned social elements are already built in you can email uh, your post to somebody you can tweet it you can uh, put it on facebook uh, and also if you are on uh, mobile you can also see this that uh, you will be able to share this via whatsapp as well for indian market we actually think whatsapp is a lot more powerful than email because that's where most of the people consume their content or you know access a lot of the uh, daily sort of uh, reading material or content consumption happens creating content is as easy as you see so essentially you have three choices you can make all of your content free or you can make some of your content free so at, at for each piece of content that you create you have the choice 
whether you want it free for all, whether you only want the content to be accessed uh, by your followers, or you want this to be paid. For the sake of this conversation, let's say I want this to be free because for, for most creators, right, the, uh, the mix of content is a lot of their content will be free. Some of their will be behind a sort of like a hard uh, registration wall. And then some of that content will be paid because uh, in general, not all content that's out there is pay worthy for all creators or for most creators as well. Even the big sort of uh, New York Times of the world as well follow the same same philosophy in, in, in different ways. So let's say this is free. I want to create a why did, why did we create scroll stack? can quickly upload a photo let's see what do I want to put in I should find a photo somewhere here kya hai, kya hai, kya hai, kya hai. for the post there you go open the photo is uploaded I can say source this is scroll design theme these are the why and then I then I can add if I want to add an image if I want to embed a video if I want to add a list link or a page break I can let's say add a list this is reason one reason two reason three right and uh, then uh, what we are I think here I'll mention that what we are also launching in the next two weeks is uh, not only audio or video, but we, uh, sorry, not only images or video, but you will also be able to embed uh, native audio. So you don't necessarily have to link to Spotify or anything else. We are actually, for the Indian market, we, we feel that you'll be able to cross the chasm with a lot of creators uh, who are more comfortable talking about what they're passionate about versus actually writing about it. So I think audio is something that we are keenly working on. We want the experience to be as smoothless as possible, as smoothless as uploading an image file as well. So that's going to happen here as well. And then once this is done, uh, because this is open web, right? So we are not an app. We are open web because this is accessible by SEO. Anybody can look for it. Anybody can find it. The moment you create it, uh, all of this is saved real time. And the, the moment you hit post within three seconds, this is live. So anybody who goes on my scroll stack right now at ritesh.scrollstack.com actually can actually see this. Google will start crawling this and, and, and essentially listing this at the same time and it'll happen very, very quickly. Uh, but as, as we have mentioned, we also have payments integration. So let me also show you uh, while I'm not on my mobile, uh, let me actually see if I can show the mobile view of this. So view developer, let's see, do this, right? So this is uh, the browser browser essentially is uh, one of the sort of like us's famous newsletters uh, that used to be on Substack. Uh, they moved away from Substack because uh, they are trying to sort of figure out like what is the value that that they charge for the 10%. Uh, they're also trying, but they're mostly focused on Western audiences because they want to grow in India. They've actually created an Indian version of browser uh, where they don't charge by subscription, but they charge by post. So let's say you want to read what are the absolute five best pieces for the day that you want to read around a variety of subject. You can pay 10 rupees and read, right? So let's say on 16th September, this was their article that they charge 10 rupees for, and I want to pay 10 rupees. So this here, uh, because I am on my, essentially uh, not on my phone, it, it asks for my uh, UPI ID, but this, if, if you were on your phone, this will automatically take you to your Google pay where you actually don't have to enter anything at all. And you will be on your Google pay. I will finish this on my Google pay on my phone. Uh, if I was on my phone for this whole thing, this will take, literally 15 seconds, uh, but here we'll take probably like five seconds more uh, to finish the whole thing, but you will see how fast all of this is. And uh, for payments, we are not saying that we've built anything that is proprietary, right? We are essentially using uh, what is available mainstream. So here done 50 in the 15, 20 seconds that we were talking, the, I've unlocked this article by paying the browser 10 rupees. And I have access to the top five pieces that I should be reading today in that time frame, right? So this is how fast the entire platform works. Again, on the mobile as well, you can see that there is no scroll stack branding. Uh, there is browser and this is browser sort of like 
user base and the feed uh, is entirely browser, right? So we essentially want to make sure that we are creator first. So that's where I'll essentially stop the demo. If you have any questions about product or anything, again, when we do questions with Abhishek, I welcome all kinds of questions, any feedback that you have, uh, please throw them my way. I'll quickly go into sort of the philosophy of why we started scroll stack, right? And, and, and when I say we, uh, it, it was essentially Samir and I, so Samir is the person who started scroll about six years ago. Uh, Samir and I have known each other for about five years of that journey because uh, when I was still at Facebook, we had done some uh, projects together that only Scroll was willing to take up because they were digital first, digital native, uh, and we did some very interesting projects around uh, elections in 2014 and stuff. So Samir and I have known each other for a while. Uh, and uh, once I left Facebook to spend a, a lot more time or all my time with my family, I had more bandwidth to sort of, you know, think through other things in terms of what are interesting problems to solve for. And this was one of those. Right? So scroll stack, what are we trying to solve for with scroll stack? Scroll stack is a platform that is mobile first, that is multilingual, and it has global payments attached to it. Our vision is to make selling of online content by creators as, as easy as selling of physical goods. So one of the challenges today is, let's say you make $500 uh, or 25,000 rupees smartphones or smartwatches. You can sell them online in five minutes flat, right? You can register on Amazon, start doing this, all of that. But write a 2,500 piece article, you know, or create a great comic book and try and sell it online, right? You have to jump through 50 different hoops to do that. It's not possible. We actually want to make selling of online content, whether it's audio, video, text, whatever digital content format, we want to make that super easy for everybody. And, and, and that's, that takes us sort of like to the big problem. It's not just one faceted. It's not just about selling things, right? All big tech platforms where creators build their uh, following today. And also, by the way, before we go into this, we don't see scroll stack as a replacement for big tech platforms, right? This is an and strategy. So, Creators have never had an audience like you can get on Twitter, Instagram, or a TikTok or a Facebook before. And creators should continue to build out their audiences on those platforms. Pla platforms like Scrollstack, Substack, Patreon could actually be a graduation for them, where they all where they take some of the current followers and do that. And trying to do that, the challenge is uh, ad supported social media. So uh, out of the big tech platforms, I spent 16 years across Google and Facebook. So I know that they are not changing their advertising led models anytime soon, right? They, they could, what we are doing, they could do this in five minutes, but it goes against how they currently monetize. So it's going to be very difficult for them to actually you know, change their DNA and do different things. That's where platforms like Patreon, Substack and others come into play. Uh, but the challenge there is, uh, a lot of these are high effort, right? So let's say if you write a newsletter and you try to monetize the newsletter, which means that you have committed to delivering a certain quality content on a regular basis, which means that it's going to take up a lot of your time. But what if you only want to produce once a month and you only want to charge for that once a month, the rest of the writing that you do, which is short form that you don't want to charge for, right? So for us, we actually are not going to uh, sort of commit ourselves to say we will only have subscriptions or we'll only have paper post. We will build a platform that works for creators in any form that they choose to create content on. So you don't have to necessarily say that I'll also, I'll, I'll do my newsletters on Substack, but I'll do my post on some other platform. Do your newsletters, do your paper post, do every, do your audio, everything on, on one platform and actually you'll have the ability to sort of, you know, grow, go across ways of monetization and also ways of reach, reaching people. Uh, also, there is no black box like medium, right? On medium, you might be able to get paid, but the challenge on medium will be that uh, there is an algorithm that says like how much time people are spending. So then you are encouraged to sort of write longer and longer and longer. But a lot of the times the best writing or best content is actually something that you can consume very, very quickly. For example, let's say somebody is writing about investment, uh, op uh, uh, investment tips, right? There, right? The best learnings I have had has usually come from very pithy, very small articles that says, these are the five things that you need to do, not five shares you need to buy, but these are the five principles that you need to follow and why versus reading, you know, a, an, uh, a 5,000 p uh, words long piece. So I think, and all of this is in, if you are an English speaker, everybody on this call is able to figure all of this out easily. Right? But assume that you most of Indian creators, right? A lot of creators who write in non-English never heard of medium. Medium has very little non-English content, forget Hindi, right? Very little French, very little Italian, German, 
nothing at all right substack as well like indian creators are on substack but how many hindi you know creators are on substack because it's only newsletters that what that that you can do what about uh, in in india how many people actually have email addresses that they use regularly but when you uh, you know change it from email to whatsapp then you open up a billion plus people who actually you can target to so all of this is actually a lot more difficult for multilingual and and and, and mobile first creators worldwide this shift of you know content that is available across multiple platforms some of it is paid some of it is free is actually happening already right uh, and the, the the demand that is rising the most is content that helps people get better at something right this is like is a self improvement or art or anything has to do with any of that right and like what you see on the slide i'm not going to talk through every piece is different platforms where this is happening out of all of these the most interesting platform for me in all of this is actually himalaya in china this is an audio only platform where they have hundreds of millions of people who are actually consuming the content right so let me actually switch to that slide first right so himalaya has 35 million people who actually come to uh, their uh, platform every single week or uh, every single month and there are all kinds of content so the most popular content there range from audio series for primary school children to western philosophy and chinese philosophy to eq classes to drama to peppa pig converted into cantonese or mandarin right and hundreds of millions of listens for all of this so the demand for creator led content whether it's audio or text or images is actually huge and this himalaya producers are not necessarily your professional you know uh, top tier content creators and so these are people who were passionate about something and they have turned their passion into something big and there is a huge number of these creators right so these creators have large following but very little control right now so there are 50 million accounts on instagram that have more than 1000 followers that number is between million and a half to 2 million on youtube about 7 million on twitter and about 50 million more on tiktok right and this is people who are already on those platforms right now right in a country like india where there are a lot more people who don't use these platforms than who do so these numbers are only going to go up over a period of time as well uh when it comes to let's say a small portion of that will be able to convert their followers into payers payments as well is something that has completely been revolutionized over the last few years right we've had upi which is for once we are ahead of the world uh when it comes to adopt like creating an and adopting technology but the rest of the world is actually not that far behind with apple pay using frictionless payments google pay doing this and again uh, we'll see how long this china tussle with the western world lasts but uh, uh, in all in all getting payments done globally uh, especially if it's smaller and smaller payments it's going to continue to get easier as well right so for us just to cap it off right our goal is to make it easy for creators to own their audience in charge for it right as easy as we can uh, make it be what you can do on scroll stack today you've already seen so i'm not going to spend time on this i think uh, one of the things that we offer that is unique as well is we don't only have a platform but in scroll right so scroll stack and scroll are sort of connected in scroll we also have an audience that we can push a lot of creators work to as well and so that's what makes it a true marketplace where we are not only saying that we are a saas offering come and put your work here will also help a lot of the creators to actually get their work out to a lot of people uh and will will continue to grow the audiences across these platforms as well so we actually have the discovery wheel going as we speak uh and and this is a quick comparison uh in terms of like what's possible on different platforms of course we have all checks uh, for scroll stack but it's also important for to, for for us to sort of like highlight that these are some of the key things that we started with solving right so like we want to make sure that we are putting the creator first we have built multilingual support from ground up so starting today you can actually not just indian languages right like if you want to write in korean you could write in korean we have one japanese creator whose japanese work on scroll stack looks fantastic no technical integration required for payments if you wanted to do payments if you don't want to do payments that's fine as well we'll make sure the platform is free for you forever um one push reach for messaging and email so i think that's something that is actually built into the platform as well and most importantly i think which a lot of creators need who don't have a large following already is uh, discovery and essentially social support so we have a dedicated team that actually creates uh, social uh, uh, social media 
promotion material for a lot of these creators. And so if you follow scroll stack on Instagram or Twitter, you would actually see this for a lot of creators pushing out as well. So, uh, I will stop here, uh, and we can jump into questions, conversations, however, Abhishek, you want this conversation to go in. Great. Um, one, uh, to start with congratulations for launching scroll stack and maybe you'll be launching it in a big way and more creators would come. Uh, I mean, I'm excited as a creator. So I'll start with two questions, uh, which, uh, which our audience has just shared with us yeah. and because we'll just clear because you've just finished and that's when they were asking those questions. Then I'll come to my question and we'll keep covering those questions again. One, the Vijendra Mohanty, um, just asked a question, uh, and he's saying, how would the payouts happen? Will they go directly to the creator or will, will there be a graded payment as in you will accumulate first and then give it out to Vijendra later? Uh, he's eager hi, about the payments. Got it. Hi, Vijendra. Good to have you here again as well. So uh, for those who uh, haven't seen Scroopsack as a platform, Vijendra is one of our creators. He's also currently featured on the homepage as well. And we had a session with Vijendra last week as well, where he spoke to all the different creators. So good to see you here. Vijendra payouts will happen at the beginning. It will be essentially Scroopsack will collect the payments and then distribute once you accumulate. Uh, we have plans to actually also enable direct payments to creators where we, we don't have to do this when it happens real time. We have to hit a certain scale before we make that happen, but we are currently talking to payment pro processors in sort of like launching that as early as possible. So the plan is to move to that Vijendra for sure, but for now we are accumulating and then distributing to creators. Okay. I have uh, the question for the same thing, but since you're all allowing people to collect money, through the UPI, does not UPI collect money directly in their accounts or does it have to be like, first it goes to your account and then that's how it happens. Right now it has to happen where it goes into our account and then we essentially distribute, but, okay. uh, but it's not only UPI. So okay. we have everything Like we have cards as well. We have uh, bank transfer as well uh, for, for those who don't want UPI. So right now we have a single channel payment integration. So it has to come through us. But as I said, we are essentially working on figuring out how do we make it so that at least creators who are expecting to create paid content regularly should be able to get it directly to them. Right. So we will have, so I, like the more nuanced answer to that is we will always have two types of creators. One type of creator who will create paid content more regularly, right? People like Vijendra, people like Vivek call and, and others. Uh, and then for them, it actually works better if the payment goes to them directly so that they don't have to wait for us to sort of accumulate and then do that. It's easier for us as well. If that happens, because it's less work on the platform side as well. But majority of creators will not create paid content as regularly or at the same frequency. For them, it's easier to actually go through the process of creating their own payment integration into scroll stack while we will make it directly easily available with the payment processor. They might not even want to do that, right? They might say and say, you know, fine, pay me once a month, like, you know, AdSense or somebody else might pay you as well. And, and I'm perfectly happy with that. Right? So just like it, the, the, other platforms in which this happens, we expect majority of the creators to fall into that, but we realize that uh, our sort of like, you know, uh, creators who create a lot of content might fall into category where the direct integration is needed, which we have already started thinking through. When you were giving a presentation, you mentioned a very interesting data point saying that people who have more than thousand followers on mm -hmm. various platforms, you said in, on Twitter, there are 7 million such people mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So, I would start with, okay, you must, when you started building scroll stack, uh, the first thing which may have come to your mind is, oh, there is an audience out there. Uh, there are these set of users out there because that's how you walk backwards by knowing your audience. So can you like throw us some data more about when you were thinking, is there a persona? Was there a persona in your mind? Are there different categories of users or in terms of age, in terms of what kind of uh, content they create or are this, were this earning money by doing this or non? So uh, 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 can you paint us a very brief picture uh, kind of who is the audience actually? I mean, I understand all creators are your audience, but mm. maybe more specific. Yeah. So we actually see we've, we've gone down this path and we've realized that. So at some point we did think that there is a, a typical creator, right? And that creator is a more sophisticated creator who, uh, creates content that is payment worthy and all of that. Right. But I think as our journey has happened over the la last six months, right. We've realized that there isn't a typical creator at all. 
right? And you will see this in the variety of creators that we currently have. We only have about, you know, 100 or so people who actually create content on scroll stack right now, but it's all kinds, right? So for example, we have Vijayendra who sort of like, you know, uh, writes both fiction as well as uh, social commentary. And, you know, hopefully at some point he'll also bring his comic books on scroll stack as well. We have somebody who already creates comic books based on their family. We have somebody who writes in Hindi on social commentary. We have somebody who writes Urdu poetry. We have one person who has done a series of ground reporting for Bihar elections on the ground with his own pictures and his own commentary, right? So there is no one set of people who actually write on scroll stack, right? We have a 17 year old who writes about history and does a fantastic job of doing that as well, right? Uh, so we have all of these kinds of people where there isn't one type of creator that we have the last three or four months, we've actually, re this realization came to us very early on once we started talking to a lot more creators, right? Where we realized that we actually want to build for people where they have no idea, right? That they're actually a creator where this label does not apply. See, ideally we want to be in a world where everybody is a creator because everybody is passionate about something, right? So Abhishek, you talked about passion economy, right? We are building for the passion economy and passion economy is made of for people like even me as well, right? Where I have zero creative bone in my, uh, body, right? Like that credit goes to my wife who like paints beautiful paintings and you know, all of that stuff, uh, large canvases and all. So, but I can at least write about, let's say how to brew your own beer, you know, or I think I'm an expert on test cricket while I will, ne I will not get a send a sc even scroll won't publish my writing, you know, on, on cricket, but I will, <laughs> consider, but I can write it on scroll stack, right? That is my passion, right? I am that ideal person and it could be in any language, right? So for us, and everybody, right, who has that they have anything to contribute to, whether it's they want to draw a picture for that, whether they want to say that on their phone, record it and just post it, or they want to, you know, write beautifully and, you know, create long pieces. We don't have a type. We don't have a personality in mind. We don't have a language in mind. We don't have a region in mind. This could be anybody who can get started in a few minutes, get going and just continue to do this, right? And as I said, right, payments is more of a thing where we know that a small percentage of creators will actually sell things. Most of them are pursuing their passion, but at some point in their journey, they might reach a point where they are able to monetize. We want the ability for them to monetize there for people as well. Right. So that's essentially sort of like the brief journey slash philosophy Abhishek that we've gone through yeah. uh, in sort of like the last six months where we started on one end of the spectrum and we've ended up what yeah. I think is the right end of the spectrum. Yeah. You had briefly touched about how like Chinese creators are building some great uh, content and also because what sounds, how it sounds is like some of parts is better than the entire whole thing, which will come out later on when it, more creators come on board. So like Himalaya, you mentioned 30 odd million people are creating these audio tapes, audio books and so on and so forth. Um, do you have, a, 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 because you have worked at Google and you have worked at Facebook, which is essentially, I mean, at least for Facebook, it's all about user generated content. So do you have some insights about India's, content creation uh, trend or the phenomena which is happening uh, that will be like really helpful to understand how sure. things are going. Yeah. yeah. And I, I left Facebook about two years ago. So I'll share learnings and, any, and assume that these are at least uh, two years old. So yeah, yeah. I, I have been involved. So I have had the front row seat at least at, so both at Google as well. So I was setting, I was involved while I was based in California, I was involved in setting up both Google and Facebook in India while being at those companies. Okay. So okay. I'm lucky okay. enough to have like the front row seat at like seeing how the platforms have progressed, especially with Facebook because it's more recent. Yeah. It started off with a lot of English content, a lot of, you know, uh, uh, a lot of more like prestige content being very, very popular and all of that stuff in the last four or five years, right? While the content demand, which ideally should drive content generation has been highest for Indian languages. Right. And we, and at, while I was at Facebook, we saw this regularly that, uh, people were clamoring for content that was in local language. And that's where you saw that. That's where I think TikTok become re, became really, you know, successful. And so I'll actually bridge these two, right? Facebook and TikTok. Uh, so TikTok became really uh, successful because it actually picked up very, very quickly where Facebook couldn't really latch onto, which don't make content creation so easy that people don't have to think twice before actually creating and sharing. Right. And in local language. So the most popular creators, if you look at 
pages with highest following on facebook versus pages in highest following or creators with highest following on tiktok before it was banned right on facebook every the top 10 top 15 most of them actually created content in english right their posts were in english and all on tiktok it was indian languages purely right zero english creators on tiktok for india and that is what the country actually looks like right so i think if when you match these two the demand was really really strong on facebook for indian language right and creators who can actually you that you could connect with right whereas and tiktok actually came and made that super successful you know for 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 their creators and all right so i think that that is the trend that i've seen over the last sort of 5 or 6 years shift and actually you know uh, newer platforms coming in and doing a lot a much better job at it than established platforms because there is such a strong dna right in established platform where you can't necessarily move that quickly whereas other platforms are more natively designed to take advantage of the ability of a smartphone and a camera and the audio etc right so that's that's how i will sort of like quickly answer the question of bishay in terms of how yes. the content consumption as well as creation uh, trends have shifted in the last 5 to 6 years that i've had the front row seat to Yeah, so one of one of the another question because when I when you were mentioning scroll stack, it's about payments, it's about uh, it's about the local languages, and obviously create building your own. You can also build your own audience. So I have a question again, uh, follow up question about the local languages on all publishing platforms, including WordPress, Facebook, Twitter. Though there are features, endless features. So there is a dedicated team in Apple which works on using like translation. You can. use roman script and gets converted into your local script and so on and so forth or mm. you can also write in the, now apple also has a, a feature called where you just publish in you write in roman script but it it uh, you right. don't have to worry about it uh, becoming in the english words both all the publishing platforms have failed when it comes to creating uh, content or publishing content written content in the local language and that's where most of the people struggle even on facebook like i remember like my mother is a english uh, is not does not speak english she gets english but when it comes to creating content even on whatsapp she does not want to create everything in hindi or maithili or, or whatever is a mm-hmm. language but mm-hmm. it ends up becoming the roman script like roman script is the default uh, publishing script for all the local languages now where i find a lot of platform like yours if you want someone to publish in gujarati Uh, they would have to like and we know our school schooling system even people who have graduated from school they are not able to do that so how will you tackle that problem for a creator uh, publishing in because a lot of people like say vijendra and me i can write in hindi but maybe i have lost touch with writing hindi the way i used to but i i have kept speaking hindi yeah? and maybe not audio but i want to publish how will that happen so that's one of the reasons i would want to know more yeah so i think so abhishek the problem that you highlighted right, which is like the keyboard problem right that these tech companies have tried to solve for ever i think that we we will not even try to attempt to solve it right when the big tech solves it by spending hundreds of millions of dollars i think that's where we will benefit from it i think there are two things that have have already happened that actually will make it much easier is uh, i don't know about apple because i am an android user at least on the phone is the speech to text is fantastic it actually gets 80 to 90% of things right right so for us i think like that one one of those things is something that we test regularly works very very well and so that's that that's one thing that we expect to do and then the second thing is audio right why do you have to write you actually don't need to write right so for whatsapp actually is fantastic that way right record a short message send it across you will get the point across right and it's actually much much faster than actually you know type in any language even if it's even if you are the fastest typer in the world you can mm. talk more quickly than you can type right so for us that's where like first of all the text to speech is actually very very good is is the first thing that it is but more than that we are actually counting on audio to solve for a lot of these problems especially for india right because we are also a culture that loves consuming audio content not only you know creating is something that is second nature right i think i don't think we've gotten as used to creating audio content but we are already very good at consuming audio content right so i think for the combination of these two will solve it in the short term longer term the big tech google and uh, apple has to solve it for the rest of the world to actually benefit from it right because they are they are essentially controlling how we type on our keyboards so there is not a lot that we could be doing but i know having been part of those uh, work efforts at facebook that there is a, so much money and effort spent on this that at some point they'll get it more right and or they yes. continue to get it you know more and more right so 
Okay. Great. So I'm now thinking like, uh, okay, I've created my account on scroll stack, as you mentioned, okay, I, I want to create account. I've created the account. I have now started creating some great content on it or whatever comes to my mind. Uh, two things. Is there a style guide? Is there a community standard? Is there an editorial policy, which we all have to like, uh, adhere to because then there are problems. State actors would not want you to publish something as it has happened on Twitter. So these are like one, this is, this was a question from one of the audience actually, which I'm trying to integrate in our, uh, is, is, is there an editorial policy, uh, which we have to adhere to? Yeah. So I think there are the way I would distinguish this is we don't have an, an, an editorial policy because we are not a publication, right? So the same way that a Facebook or a, or a Pinterest or a Twitter does not have an editorial policy, but we do have community guidelines and they will be similar to how other social platforms run their community guidelines, right? So our community guidelines are very much similar and, and, and like some context to that is one of my, as part of my nine years at Facebook, I spent four of those uh, running Facebook's global content moderation platform. Right. So I know these things in and out and I was at Facebook public policy team for sort of like the last three years of my time in India as well. So these are the issues that I've dealt with firsthand. Right. So we are, our community guidelines are exactly the same as you would see on a lot of other social platforms as well. Uh, we, I know that we will have similar challenges as they would have as well. And we will handle them in the same ways that other social platforms or, or, or other uh, platforms tackle as well. And, and this is where sort of like, so scroll dot in is sort of like where editorial policies apply because like Naresh runs that and that happens, right? Scroll stack is an open platform where anybody can come and create. So we don't have editorial control. We don't want editorial control. As long Great. as you meet the community guidelines, you are able to publish. When we receive a complaint that this a particular post does not meet the editorial guideline, we will judge them against the editorial guideline and do how the rest of the world operates. It is now uh, an established operation or a science per, to say, you know, to sort of like moderate content across the web on the internet, not easy, but it's at least established. So I think we'll follow the same formats and I have learning that, that I can again apply from big tech that, um, so that we don't make the same mistakes that they've made over the last 10 years. You also covered this a bit and there is a question from Viren as well from the audience. And I yeah. also have the same question. Okay. I've created the content. I don't, I'm not adhering to any editorial guidelines. Uh, how will I get discovered? Uh, you, you briefly mentioned the SEO will happen, but, uh, what is, uh, is there a process and but you should just know that, okay, you write like this and you will get discovered. What, what is the process like? Yeah, sure. So I think the, there are, there are a couple of different ways in which you will get discovered. So right now when the platform is new, we're actually able to promote every creator that comes on the platform. And I think that will continue to stay true for a while. Right. So I think that one is if you, again, as, as you, follow scroll stack on Twitter and Instagram, you will see that we have a dedicated team that actually create a social promotion out of the content that you post. And we do this both in terms of images and videos, et cetera. Right. So that's one way of making sure that you are being discovered by our existing audiences, et cetera. Second is as we start to scale, uh, we are going to make sure that there are categories or there are, you know, topics that people uh, write under, right. And, and this is self-classified. And so for example, if you're going to write on tech, then you will use the hashtag tech, hashtag uh, crypto and all of that. So whenever somebody, and then we will continue to promote uh, those category pages. So, and, and if you are a high quality creator, you know, that, that, that sort of like is featured on that category page, then as part of traffic that the category page gets, right, you will automatically be uh, discovered by people who actually goes to that category page as well. Right. So, so that, that is something that we will continue to push. Uh, with, we will also do cross platform promotions as we scale, right? So there are like, we might have, for example, we might have a widget, uh, after somebody, uh, finishes reading your article on, uh, reading an article on scroll dot in that says discover the best of scroll stack. Right. And then we will continue to sort of like cycle through our uh, creators or posts on that widget as well, as you know, like that is very high traffic, right? So I think like that is a lot of discovery there as well. And over a period of time, we will drive a lot of dedicated traffic and acquisition as well as a platform for scroll stack as a platform as well. Right. So for us, we do see this as a marketplace and not necessarily as a SaaS. So it is more in our interest to make sure that you get discovered and more people discover you on scroll stack, uh, and you are successful on scroll stack. So there is a lot of things like I'm, I'm just highlighting the top two or three things that, uh, I can at this stage without sort of, you know, giving out the secret sauce, but that's a yes. discovery process 
will start to happen and is already happening right right now yeah. like for example as i said there is right now if you go to scrollstack.com we feature 10 creators right and, and and these 10 creators change on a weekly or a bi-weekly basis okay. we feature 10 posts and they also continue to shift um, as well right so we will have multiple ways in which we help creators be discovered either at yeah. a creator level post level or topic level yeah because nitin uh, one of our audience uh, nitin uh, he has a concern that since we all know that organic reach is going down in social media it's nearly like out of not not more than six percent of your audience is able to read what you publish uh, as you mentioned that these are the things which will which you will be doing um, and since you were mentioning oh we are also promoting on social media so that's unless you're spending money like and unless you're doing paid social it's very difficult to reach out to the audience on social so that was the concern which nitin has um, right. so is that that is that the reason that more seo will play more role here on scroll stack than anything else mm-hmm. like promoting even if your team does promotion on social media, unless you are spending money, it won't be much helpful. Right. So I think, uh, so there are, there are two sides of it, right? One is SEO will definitely play a role on an ongoing basis because again, like there is no such thing as, you know, you can't beat SEO discovery, right? Having built scroll.in from ground up, I think this is something that we know for sure, right? Scroll.in has not been built on paid social media outreach, right? It has been built on like growth through organic social channels as well as, you know, uh, SEO discovery as well. So I think we have that muscle for sure that for both organic social outreach as well as SEO, we'll utilize it as much as possible. We haven't necessarily completely ruled out doing paid social promotions, but again, (laughs) we don't want to get to that stage until and unless we actually, uh, (laughs) excuse me, yeah, just fail and uh, get to that, right? So we will, at some point we will do that as well. But again, it's not something that we want to default to from day one, because that is, and having been on the other side, it is a fickle audience, right? So we would much rather have you build a longer lasting audience, which may be smaller in size, because if you want size, and let's say if you want 100,000 followers, please be on Instagram and Facebook, right? There is yes. no better platform than Instagram and Facebook or probably Twitter, you know, for you to get 100,000 followers. But if you want that those dedicated 1000 people or 3000 people who come and consume your content on a regular basis, that's what scroll stack is for, right? It's for more of your sort of like committed followers and others, which is gain a large size, right? So that's why we say that we are not a replacement for your large social platforms that give you 1000s and 1000s of people uh, through their platforms. We are more of a graduation for you to go from 100,000 who may see your content for three seconds. For example, one of the things on, on scroll stack, an average person who an average user who visits scroll stack spends three and a half minute consuming content in one session, single session, right? Which means that they're reading probably a post end to end, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas on Instagram, your post gets three seconds max, not even mm-hmm. that, right? So that's the difference between the two platforms, right? For three seconds of fame, please be on Instagram. And that when you need to convert that three seconds to three minutes, that's where the scroll stack graduation should happen. Is, is there a plan or, or do you think that uh, since there will be so many people who would want to create now, I'm assuming, will you be helping them learn the tricks and the tips of how to create content? Because there is a process, like we talked about content strategy in the last two sessions, if people are wanting to create a newsletter, these are the other ways to go about it. Uh, will you be holding such workshops or helping people? There will be obviously published guides as well, but how do you want to help our edu- our audience ed- get educated about this yeah, yeah absolutely so so there are uh, so the short answer abhishek is a yes right uh, we've, we've already started on this journey somewhat so we've already had uh, uh, two creator meetups as we talked about it the first one was more about sort of like just uh, making sure that the creators were familiar with the platform the second one was the one where two of our creators shared their sort of process in terms of this is how they create, this is how they sort of go through it. And we will continue to do that, which is the best way to learn is from your fellow creators, right? This is my process. This is what makes me successful. We will also make sure that we, as we have these meetups, we will get external people as well. Let's say somebody who is a very good writer or teaches creative writing, right? We have somebody on our team who teaches creative writing at Ashoka, right? That person can come in and actually talk about here is the process for uh, people who are first starting out, etc., And there is honestly, there is so much resources that's available online already there that we don't want to reinvent the wheel where we will make sure that people are exposed to that is one. 
uh right so so i think that will that we will make sure that these by these doing two things one is help people learn from existing creators who are doing well on the platform and two making sure that we create things that are unique for our platform as well as general guides that are easily available for example how to create best audio content we don't have to write the playbook for that right like i'm sure like spotify will do a much better job of how to create great audio content than we can we would rather make sure that people have access to all these resources that are available for everybody and not have to reinvent the wheel right we will we, the short answer is yes but that's how we actually plan to approach it at least in the next sort of 12 to 18 months all right so i've created content you're distributing my content people are reading about it now uh, nadika has a very interesting question all right you give me the freedom to price put up a price for my content but how do i come up with pricing because it's a very complex thing we all know that it is a separate thing that there are experts and there's a whole team thinking about it there are pricing analysts which who work in all the big companies so what would be your idea what would be your suggestion or is there a way that people oh i want like browser is charging rupees 10 hmm. what should vijendra bhanti charge for his comic books what <laughs> what is the way out right. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah, so this is this is a difficult one right and we have spent a lot of time trying to think through this which is should we be guiding creators through this should the creators figure out figure out their own because each creator will have an audience where the audience see at the end of the day in an economy right in a in a marketplace it's the audience that decides what is the best price to pay especially for something like content that hasn't been priced before as well right so we are we are at a very interesting juncture where we are not necessarily dealing with Uh, a known commodity that has a set price right if you go and buy a soap there are price ranges for that right if you buy and if you go and buy a car there are price ranges for that uh, if you go and buy a song online right there are there used to be price ranges for that right but that doesn't necessarily transfer very well to the type of content that we are talking about right so i think it is a first of all this the the quick answer to that is abhishek it's going to be a journey that both us and creators learn along the way right where how does this actually happen and i think the marketplace will also teach us a lot of things right which is people will tell you right and say hey look this was great at 10 rupees right or this was way too expensive at 100 rupees and as well so i think we will have to a the answer here is uh at the creators end experiment definitely instead of starting low start high and then come low because it's very difficult to go from low to high it's easier to come from high to low right i i was actually like we uh, i was talking to somebody who has a lot of experience in pricing news content and news subscriptions globally right uh, that that person used to run sydney morning herald and all of that and we were having a conversation on how did you decide how did you go through this like 10 year journey and stuff and the biggest learning for that was that be aggressive you'll always short change yourself but be aggressive in terms of how you price it uh price your content so i think one is that second is as our con- our platform gains traction and we see trends happening one of our commitments to our creator is we will continue to share these trends with you right that look at these price points we are seeing these types of content do really well it's too early for us to do that right now right right now we don't have enough data to do do that but once we have that we are going to start doing that to make sure that we are also sharing these learnings with creators uh by either publishing a blog post that sort of says hey look this is how you know some of the early creators are pricing and, and you know how that's working out uh, of course anonymously as well uh so it will be a mix of these things where we will share as a platform you will experiment as a creator and most importantly the market's going to give us signals that we need to be open to and you know continue to adjust along the way all right and then this has been a problem with publishing for very long and i mean we we all have been like looking for the napster moment for publishing and people said that micro payment will enable that somehow it has not worked out for all the publishing we all thought oh now blockchain people said oh this will solve all the problem about yeah. micro payments now yeah. uh, so but you guys are taking i mean going ahead with the micro payments and 10 rupee or 5 rupee do you think this will bring in some kind of a a, a ease to consume with, because if i want to buy subscription for economist or for wall street journal or for any of these publishing uh brands uh, it's a huge drain on my pocket I and mean, since i pay in indian rupees and their price in dollars it's always a huge drain uh, and i would love to make i'll have to pay 10 rupees for browser even browser is like 35 dollars a year 
uh, which I which I subscribe to. So for for me, when I saw ten, then I felt cheated. Why did I not? <laughs> right. And I don't read all of it because exactly. half half the time you never go through the news. Exactly. Letter. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So so Abhishek, so the, this is a this is a chicken and the egg problem, right? So again, we've spent as scroll, right? We've spent a lot of time over the last few weeks talking to global publishers about subscription journeys that they've had. And these are the best names that you've mentioned, right? That they've shared their journey. The American publishers and the European publishers are not going to go down the micro micro payments way. They are not anytime soon, right? They don't believe in it. They don't because it hasn't worked in their markets because when they started their subscription journeys, micro payments did not exist. Yes. Right? Apple pay has only come up in the last year or so in a really massive way. Right. So now when you go to New York, you can pay with Apple pay on the subway, right? That is a true microtransaction in the US, right? A dollar or a Euro in Europe and all of that. It did not exist. So they don't believe in it. They believe in whatever data tells them. So I don't think for them, for a lot of them, it will actually matter, but some of them. So we've also had conversations for scroll stack with some of the global publishers and some of them are starting to see micro payments as an entry point, like the browser has done for Indian audiences. Yeah. Right? So that will start to happen, right? That we are sure of that at least some of them who haven't seen the kind of success that a Wall Street Journal or New York Times has seen, they will start to see that because they haven't had subscription revenues come in. They will see this as an option. They'll be more open to it. Right. For Indians, Indian publishers, right? I think that moment is here and now. It there will be a cat, there will be a uh, an inflection point. It will happen in probably six months, year, two years. We don't know, right? We are willing to wait it out. But I think for Indian public publishers in general, whether and I don't think it has to happen on scroll stack. I think it has to happen at the market level, right? It can't be a platform specific thing. It has to be a market specific thing. So I think that will happen in the next. 18 months to 24 months or probably sooner where we will figure out the combination of content that audience is willing to pay for and ways the audience pays for it. Right. See, it's always not about what, how is the audience paying? The first threshold is, is the audience willing to pay for this? Okay. Right? Are we creating content good enough that the audience is willing to pay for it? Right. That is the biggest okay. challenge. While the creators or publishers might think that I have fantastic content that audience should absolutely pay for it. But if they're yeah. not willing to pay for it, then it's not going to happen. Right. But this is going to be a big challenge for news in India because people mm -hmm. expect this for free while they will pay yeah. three rupees for, or five rupees for a newspaper every day. Huh. Right. They won't pay for high quality journalism online. Why are online hai na, free mein chahiye, mere online paas. should be free. Huh? Ah, right. So that, so that will, for news, it's much harder. We don't want to solve it for news, but let's solve it for everything else, which is much bigger portion of content. So two very quick questions and then we will address the elephant in the room. Sure. I'm saving it for the last. <laughs> uh, how do you allow like to use pictures? Like, will there be a copyright issue? Like I downloaded something from the internet and put it as an image. Uh, how do you, because usually people don't get caught unless it's a major, but is there a policy? Do you think it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be there? we do, we do. Yeah. So uh, the, we will expect you to uh, respect the copyright of any content that you put on. And again, as I had mentioned, if it does get reported for violating any of the community standards, then we will uh, have to sort of like take appropriate action. So the, the same rules of good etiquette and copyright and other things on the internet applies yeah. to scroll stack as well, because again, we don't want it to be a platform where, uh, we don't want to be known for the wrong things, right? So we are yeah. actually going to be, you know, good about how do we make sure that we protect, you know, people's rights, especially if it's a creator led platform, right? What you create is what you own, right? So yes. it is an important thing and we don't want people to sort of, you know, take that for granted for sure. I remember Flickr used to be like one great example. Like they would, they, they had built this within the community that you would not really use someone else's pictures. Exactly. exactly. Um, also, will you allow anonymous users? Absolutely. Okay, great. Now let's address the elephant in the room. I mean, we have been talking about, we talked about it briefly. So Substack has also come with an Indian payment. Now they've introduced the Indian payment. That was the biggest problem when it came to using Substack yeah. in the beginning. Now, since I can create an account then I can also publish there and I could take money in the Indian. Maybe they will also be working on the Indian language. So how are you going to because they may as well be your biggest competitor or maybe not because, uh, because the marketing IPR says, yes, they are, but maybe your bigger competitor is Facebook or maybe they, they are your competitors. So how, who are your competitors 
and how will you tackle Substack? Because it has already garnered that huge yeah. amount of interest and enthusiasm. The joke is around that everyone has a newsletter these days. Exactly. Right. So I think for me, the last part you said is actually what sets us apart, right? We are not a newsletter platform at all. Right now, you cannot create a newsletter on Scroll Stack. Right. Yeah. That's not going to happen for another, you know, at least a few more months. So we don't think we are a newsletter first platform because again, when you look at India, right? See, English speaking audience in India and rest of India are two very different things. Right. For English speaking audience in India and for even a smaller percentage of within English speaking audience in India, newsletters are big. But for most Indians, newsletters, I, I, they don't care. Right. They want content that is, you know, consumed on a daily basis on their WhatsApp, on a website where they can click a link on WhatsApp and quickly go and consume and all of that stuff. So we are actually building for that. So we are very glad that Substack has finally launched in India, you know, for an Indian payments and all of that stuff. Uh, and on, on Twitter, somebody said like, hey, like you guys might have had a role to play in it. I don't think so personally, but <laughs> if it is, then I'm glad because it has helped a few creators, right? If you have a Substack newsletter, please keep it going, right? We would love for you to be successful in each of the platforms. I think creators should use all kinds of platforms that make them successful and, and eventually figure out which plot platform is best for them. We would much rather grow the pie than say that I want to take somebody's business. I want to take somebody's business. We have, there is a big enough economy out there in passion economy where we are at the cusp of it. We haven't even started to realize how big of an opportunity this is and how big this could be. Right? So I think we are happy for all kinds of platforms to exist. Uh, there is so like, Substack is somebody that we would compete with. Patreon is somebody that we would compete with. We Facebook is not our competition, right? We want to benefit from Facebook's growth, TikTok's growth, YouTube's growth, all of that. They're too big for us to sort of consider that they're our competition, right? So for example, we don't think that video is an area where we want to be number one in, right? Because you can't be a YouTube, right? YouTube does it so well for a video creator or TikTok when it was still around and I hope it comes back, right? At some point. Yeah that you don't want to be them, right? Because they're already so good at it. We would much rather solve other yeah. problems that these big platforms are not solving, right? So for us, we love that Substack is, is in India. It proves that there is so much opportunity that everybody, that more people should be thinking about this and building for this. Uh, and uh, more people, more platforms that can solve creators' pro problems. We are also likely, uh, one of my big learnings from big tech, right, is the more platforms that come up, you are encouraging a lot more creators to actually start creating as well, right? Because they see value in different platforms as well, right? So for us, fantastic. Let's all together grow the pie, you know, get more and more creators thinking, get more and more people to think like creators, build like creators, create like creators, and actually, you know, like remove this label uh, that you have to be a creator to create, right? Anybody, right? As I said, I should be right about my test cricket learnings and, you know, publish while scroll refuses to publish it. I should be able to, you know, get the word out there and, you know, do it that way. So anybody should be able to create an audio thing and, you know, and, and you put it out there. So for us, it's not right. We, we love competition. We love for more platforms to be out there. Uh, yeah. And so because, yeah, because that was the reason I saw uh, political fix was on, is on Substack. So I was wanting to ask and that gave the answer very clearly. Yeah. And uh, from what we have talked Till now, I understand that I remember that keynote address of Steve Jobs where he was describing the desktop as the hub of your entire thing of your internet and music and videos and it all would come together. So I am looking at uh, scroll stack as more of a hub of wherever your digital creation is happening other than the creation here. You can always say, oh, my newsletter is there, but you can go and read it in more detail here. Uh, I, I've written something on Twitter, but I have elaborated more. Uh, the thread I wrote, I've written a proper article here. Uh, and you've already, you know, differentiated yourself from Medium and differentiated yourself from other platforms. So there was another question. Uh, Ghost is also allowing such creation. and But then Ghost is also, uh, you can also make your own templates and all. So what do you think about Ghost as a... Uh, not as a competitor, but yes, people would want to create something there if they want Absolutely. to. Yeah. So I think, so I think there are, there are lots of platforms that do this, right? So I think the way we differentiate ourselves is ghost is a SaaS platform, whereas we are a content marketplace, right? Okay. Like, uh, so I think that's the key, key, key difference in terms of like the two things where we will help with discovery. We will help our category specific pages. We will help home pages as well. Whereas ghost is more of a competitor for Substack than us. Right, because okay. they're both uh, they're both uh, SaaS-based platforms. 
Yeah. Whereas we are a discovery led and we want to make discovery work as well. We know it's not going to be easy, right? It's not the easiest problem to solve in the world, but we are, we are, we are confident in sort of like our collective abilities to uh, be able to take a really good crack at it and actually make something out of it. Okay. So now I'll ask you your favorite question because you're, de- you're more of a technical person and we have not even touched even and what was the most difficult part of creating scroll stack? Because then you, uh, because you, it's your baby, you started this. Did you meet the deadlines? Where did you miss the deadlines? Because we all know that's how it happens. Yeah. Um, how did you get the team together? What was like that journey for you as a tech, as a, um, as, as the founder, where did you get those guys? Because all of this is like pretty new for our market. And yeah. also to get hold of that team must have been quite a task. Um, yeah, yeah. I think the most difficult thing for you. Absolutely. So I think, see, I, we were, I actually was very lucky that I found the scroll team, right? So like Samir and the scroll team that the design team and the ends team and others have done all the hard work, right? In creating the scroll dot in uh, platform and, and, and it's beautiful, right? Like for everybody who uses scroll, you would see that it's like, it flows very well, minimalist design and all of that. So we actually had a very good team in place that, and I'm actually here representing all of their work, right? So all the beautiful you know, flows and everything that you see, it's their work, right? I am the mouthpiece. So I take zero credit for any of it. All of that credit actually goes to the ends team and the, and the design team that we already have in place that we were very lucky to you know, have in place. And, uh, and, and both Samir and I, the hardest part for us, right? For Samir and I to sort of like on this journey, had been that we have created this entire thing remotely during lockdown. Okay. Okay. Great. So that, that was both interesting. It also worked in our favor, but also it was a tough thing to sort of like do, you know, to try and do all of this remotely. I've, I've worked on sort of like product teams at Google and Facebook as well. And it's much easier when you are in the room, you know, uh, trying to hash this out. You spend six hours trying to solve a problem, but when you get out of the room, you've solved it. We didn't have that luxury here, right? Uh, yes. We were also, Samir and I are also operating in two different time zones because Samir went to New York for some meetings in March. We were both there in Feb. I came back, Samir had to go back. He's been there since March, right? Okay. So we, yes. <laughs> we've been operating that way as well. Samir's been coordinating like with him, working with edge teams and design team across time zones as well. We are trying to fill that out. So we didn't have, we have fantastic tech and design team. So they made sure we didn't have technical challenges in trying to make this work. They were great at, you know, like capturing our vision and turning into a reality, but coordination during COVID and working across time zones and stuff has been sort of like the most challenging, but also most rewarding. So it's been a very fun journey, to be honest, right? We are like very proud of what we've made so far, but we've, we've only reached the tip of the iceberg, right? Like, as, as I said, in the next two weeks, audio is going to be live. Uh, we are also not, we are also going to come out of beta, right? Where right now you need an invite for you to be on scroll stack. We're going to take that. Away, you, anybody in two weeks will be able to go on scrollstack.com, create an account, go live in five minutes. You won't have to jump through the hoops that our great people so far have been able to jump through the hoops. So uh, that's that's been the journey so far, Abhishek. And again, like, couldn't be happier with where we've landed. And but a long way to go, right? It's just so. So Ritesh is the technical founder, co-founder of the team because that's what we have heard. Like all, I'm I'm not from a technical background, but oh, you got to have a technical founder. Uh, Samir is the uh, other partner and Ritesh has taken care of the entire technical part of the no, no, not, not, not at all. I think Samir spends more time with the tech and design team because like they are scroll and they know each other really, really well as well. And then okay. for me, my, my, uh, sort of like key strengths that I build to the team, bring to the team essentially is how to build platforms. Right. And then how to grow platforms, not, not only from a technical way, but from sort of like okay. an operations and design and, you know, growth way as well. So I think we've, we haven't, so Samir and I have never sort of like divided that when say you are technical, I'm not and all of that stuff. We've essentially, we solve the problems together and it's not just the two of us, right? As I said, like we've got, we've got a great tech and design team as well, where Samir and I don't have to solve the problems, right? We can actually yeah. present the problems to these teams and they're fantastic at actually solving these problems. Okay. Right? Uh, so uh, it's not, we haven't necessarily operated in that classic way. We are also not classic startup founders, right? We are not 25 from freshly graduated from <laughs> IIT, right? Yes. So yes, yes. Uh, I, I will hit 40 this year at some point. Uh, Samir has crossed that chasm. So we are not your typical 25 year old founders as well, where tech is our strength. Our strength yeah. is the gray hair that you see uh, in, in both of us and sort of collective learnings, having built platforms, having built businesses where we know this is not our first rodeo, right? We've been yeah. around the block. Yeah. 
yeah because one of the sessions in the future i see because content web also talks about the tech stack of the publishing and they have had great sessions about it uh, probably they would want to know more about the tech stack which you sure. have built yeah. and since i am not the competitive person to ask about the tech stack finally finally uh, i want you to help us know what should be the takeaways for our creators and and i would take that as a mantra because at times you have to just trust the other person who has created something and try to do something on those lines and then check it backwards did it work so what are the three takeaways which you want us to take away from the chat mm -hmm. and we what do you want us to do uh, our audience do you want us to go and create accounts or request send a request and keep creating something how what is what what is your takeaway for us i mean sure. yeah so i don't know if i necessarily have like three to be specific but let me sort of like share the most important things right so first of all is like please try the platform uh and uh and and see if 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 it if it works for you give us feedback send us feedback uh my email is british at scrollstack.com it's out there uh our team is very approachable as well so we always welcome feedback we always welcome suggestions create as much as you can i think right and, and again like there are uh we have uh, we have some creators on platform that like create a lot and that's where they learn the most from is would be sort of like my thing i, I know vijendra has been creating a lot on the platform we've got uh, nitin huran sort of like bibliography he creates a lot there are other people we have uh, mr prakash jain who writes in hindi i love reading him you know in hindi as well because i always clamor for hindi writing fantastic so create 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 whatever platform you create on please create lots and lots because i think that's where we've seen creators learn the most uh, and like try different platforms right try scroll stack uh, try substack if you are a believer in newsletters and all of that so i think that's it right i don't have necessarily abhishek any big takeaways or learnings right just like let's let's go through this journey together let's figure out what works what doesn't work uh, we are committed to making this work for as many people as possible we are not going to build for one specific use case we would rather build for uh 80% than 20% so um yes and and write in languages i think that's one thing my one big ask would be write in other than english please 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 because that's where the, there is most amount of clamoring uh or write, create in no, other than english right when in sort of say i say write if you don't want to write so abhishek people like you where you said like you've lost touch in writing in hindi you can record in hindi and put it yes. out there the world yes. will have, actually have a much bigger audience because you know people a lot more people could listen to things and get it than write especially in india with our education yeah. system so uh, i would say one thing that i would ask everybody to do create in languages other than english because huge audience is out there there are waiting i i will vouch for that yes if you have to uh, write to ritesh please do because that's how we are here because i tried to log into the system and there was an error i found a bug and i wrote them a mail i wrote it to kanik on twitter and she forwarded it to him and they were very quick to respond so please do write to him uh, he does respond he is just not saying for the, for the sake of saying and last question before i all before we end because we have been talking about newsletters all the while and there is substack and i publish on mailchimp and like you may have thought okay there are newsletter publishers serious newsletter publishers how should they be using scroll stack because a lot of our A community would want to understand. Oh, if there is a uh, if there is a way forward with our newsletters, we would want to try this out. So, if there is a use case in your mind of which you have thought about it, just let us know because I would want sure. to try it because I'm a newsletter publisher most of the time. So. Yeah, absolutely. See, so the the challenge that a lot of newsletter publishers have today is uh, it is piecemeal content, right? You've sent one newsletter out, uh, and but your best newsletter for somebody out there might have been something that you sent three days ago. Right. Mm -hmm. So, how do you make sure that all of your newsletters actually remain in one place, right? Like what browser has done, where they have the newsletter, but the, that like individual each piece, each email that they sent every day is actually cataloged on Scroll Stack, right? So, Abhishek, for you, you subscribe to browser, so you have it in your email, right? But this is yeah. a place where you actually see and say, what have they published over the last one month? What sounds most interesting, right? So, it's actually Scroll Stack could be a great way for you to actually list everything that you publish on a daily basis via email. We actually have it all in be one place and more easily easily accessible for people rather than look through their email, right? Because they might get fifteen other emails and people who subscribe to newsletters. You might have better stats than I do because I don't think about newsletters every day. But they might be subscribing to a lot more newsletters, right? So it, then it might get lost in that. So create a home for all of your content, right? Where one newsletter is a way to distribute your content. 
right yes. not necessarily yes. post your content right whereas yes. we actually want to solve a much bigger problem where where do your where does your content live right so that could okay. be the answer for that okay thanks a lot ritesh uh, with with some great uh, feedback and insights uh, which we got and i would really want that scroll stack because i had a different view when i started talking with you about scroll stack and uh, when i am ending the conversation i have a very different view uh, and it, it, it's a very pleasant view that okay you have thought deeper about how we will be creating content or how deep doing taking the passion economy ahead some data say that 30% of our indian econ economic workers are already doing that kind of work uh, freelancing mostly uh, but yes also having a platform which is taken our audience very seriously and created that that should really help thanks a lot for your time uh, we will probably get back and talk more after some time after you have launched it and more people have been using it and i hope uh, audience has found the session very useful thanks a lot for your time ritesh it was great talking with you absolutely. thank you so much absolutely my pleasure i loved it one of the best way to spend a saturday morning and uh, thank you has geek thank you abhishek for organizing this thanks everybody who's listening watching and uh, if you have anything please reach out um, have a great weekend everyone